I didn't think it was possible, but you guys look even more handsome than the first time I was up here. I'm here representing my friends and office mates at the Unnamed Press, a Los Angeles-based publishing house that publishes international fiction. Because I'm representing Unnamed as a friend, I think I'm allowed to say that this book, Kevin Kramer Starts on Monday, is the best book that they've published. And I say that because... I think it's the funniest book they've published. Debbie Graber, who will soon read from it, has published everywhere from Harper's to Hobart and back. And this is her debut collection of short fiction. It's available for a mere $10, and rumor is she will sign it if asked kindly. So without further ado, I present to you Debbie Graber. Thank you. That's very, that's very kind of you to say, David. Thank you. Um, so um, I, was, I was told I should be prepared to talk about the book a little bit, which I'm really bad at. Um, so I was trying to think of, uh, you know, interesting things that I could, could say about it. Um, and, and all I can really say is that I, I was working on my um, MFA, and, you know, you have to produce a lot of pages while you're working on your MFA. And, you know, I, I wanted to write something really interesting and really important. And the stuff that kept coming out on the page was just a lot of working out of things um, with my job. <laughs> so it was kind of just a lot of um, rage and sort of, you know, kind of uh, satire about this job that I'd had for a very long time, and which, by the way, I still, I still work at this uh, particular place. So... Um, it, you know, and it just kept coming out, and it kept coming out. So I, you know, didn't really have a choice. This is, you know, I have to produce pages, and so I was writing these stories, and, um, you know, I, I kind of ended up putting together this collection uh, about work and about sort of people and the kind of way they find themselves in corporate culture, Um and, and how labels, you know, if somebody is a manager or if someone is being managed, how it sort of seems to lead to these weird uh, kind of like this behavior that seems ingrained. Like if you're an employee, you're kind of like a rebellious teenager and you're, you know, pissing off your parents. And if you're a manager, you're like the parents and you're making the kids eat their vegetables. It's just, it's kind of like a, it was just a weird, it's just a weird non-normal state. Um, so I think that's all I'll say about it. And uh, so I'm going to be reading from a story uh, from the collection. It is a story collection. And it's called New Directions. Employees. There is a matter of some importance that the executives would like to share with you. As leaders of a company that was voted one of the 500 most transparent companies in the San Fernando Valley, Westways Magazine, September 2009, we pride ourselves on addressing any type of situation. As most of you know, the software department has been busy prepping for the first quarter release of MPM 3.0, the newest iteration of Production Solutions' continuing quest for better payroll processing software. MPM 3.0 will be a game changer, providing our clients with sleeker and hipper ways to process payroll than ever before. But when managing director Deirdre Dempsey went down to the second floor last Friday for her regular meeting with our programmers, she found the department empty. She checked the kitchen and the patio, then asked Martin from facilities to check the restrooms on each floor. No software personnel were on the premises. 
Managing Director Dempsey says that she didn't find this altogether strange, given that the developers sometimes keep odd hours. She was, however, weirded out by the silence, so she, dis so she sent what she describes as a forceful email to product manager Jim Smalley. That email went unanswered, and at 3 o'clock she went back down to software with a full head of steam and again found no one. This time the lights, which are on a timer, I'm sorry, which are on a motion detector, uh, were out, indicating that no one had been there in six hours. Since that time, HR has made contact with the families of all so software department members. It seems they all left for work on Friday, but have not been heard from since. We are investigating this phenomenon to the very best of our abilities. The Sheriff's Department has been alerted, as has the FBI. This is not, we stress, an emergency. According to law enforcement, mass disappearances are not uncommon. Often one person will decide to take the day off and others will follow suit in senior ditch day fashion. We trust in our officials and believe they are doing all they can to locate the missing software department. We will continue to give you updates as they become available. Employees. Some of you may have heard that the clothes that the software department members were wearing at the time of their mass disappearance were found in the dumpster near the facility shed across the street. This is unsubstantiated. No clothes were found in or around the dumpster. In fact, Bob Ferrara's nebulizer was still running when the department was discovered to be missing, so we can only assume the team left in a great hurry with no time to strip. As soon as we have any new information regarding the software department, we will alert you. Employees. Some of you have expressed concern about the absence of several members of the accounting staff. Do not worry. They have all been located at their homes where they are suffering from pink eye, courtesy of Doris McClellan's daughter, Amy. In response, the executive team is considering canceling Bring Your Daughter to Work Day. If, you're, if your coworkers are out of the office, do not immediately assume the worst. Unless you are told otherwise, coworker absences are due to illness, paid time off, stress leave, or some other non-threatening reason. Please note that the search continues for the software department and that the executive team realizes that since we are primarily a software company, we cannot function without a software department. We are meeting about this every day. <laughs> Employees, a new email address has been created for questions regarding the software department situation. Please email softwarequestions at prodsoul.biz. Do not ask HR or the executives for updates as we are extremely busy. Thank you for your cooperation. Employees, Production Solutions is going through a challenging time, and we appreciate your efforts to remain calm. Some of you have managed to complete your work in a timely and error-free manner. A shout out to Rachel Kaiser in particular, who answered more calls this month than anyone else in tech support. More than 300 calls. Congratulations, Rachel. A gift will be on its way pending management approval. Others, however, have not been as successful at regulating their anxiety. Please note that emailing the software questions address several times a day with speculative leads will not rectify the situation any faster. Nor, for that matter, will hounding your managers about when MPM 3.0 is going to be released. It is also unhelpful to hit the ignore button on your phone, leaving your fellow tech support representatives to answer your calls. Congratulations again, Rachel. And let it be said, too, that neither kicking over the soda machine in the break room nor spray painting a pentagram on the wall is the optimal way to handle stress. Instead, consider these options. Talk to your coworkers about the latest sports scores during your state-mandated 15-minute break. Take a yoga class before or after work. Remove your headset and take deep breaths at your desk. We must continue to act in the best interests of our clients and the company. Thank you for your attention. Employees, 
In answer to a frequently asked question, our HMO does not currently cover yoga classes. It also does not cover chiropractic or acupuncture. We will bring these items up with our insurance provider during negotiations next year. Thank you.